Hi friends, welcome back to Project Time. I was constantly receiving many follow-ups and comments from the subscribers and readers for this circuit. So I decided to design this compact, standalone, full bridge DC motor driver. This is the bare PCB board and this is the assembled board. I designed the schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and sensed the gearbest to PCB way. Uh, to get high quality fabricated boards. In this section, I will explain the board uh, briefly. In the next step, I will go through the schematic and PCB, and then in the last step, I will test the board using the 775 DC motor. This is the input connection for the, I mean, input supply for the motor, and you're gonna connect the motor wires to these two pins. This is the famous full bridge or edge bridge configuration. These two chips are MOSFET drivers. Uh, you're gonna connect two potentiometers to these connectors and one switch, six pins SPDT switch to these two connectors. And this is the supply, 12 volts supply for the uh, logic side. I mean the driver and this 80 tiny 13 microcontroller and this is the 5 volt reg 5 volts regulator for the microcontroller this pin header is for programming the microcontroller in circuit so i think it's enough for the introduction in the next step i will go through the schematic and pcb just stay tuned all right this is the altium designer environment if you don't have the Altium on your computer, there is a link in the YouTube video description that allows you to download the latest version of the Altium and activate it with a free legal license. When you activate your license, you will see your name here, the same as me. And you will have the latest version. The latest version so far is 22.10.1. Later on, if you have time, check these tutorials also. Anyway, this is the schematic diagram, PCB layout, and assembly drawings. Let's go to the schematic. Uh, as you know, with each project, I also publish an article. So I have explained everything in the article. But before I go to the PCB, this is the edge bridge configuration. And these two are MOSFET drivers. Let me show you the details of the MOSFETs because this is the uh, the component that should tolerate the high current. I want to check the specification with you. So IRF uh, 3205. Let's go to Octopart IRF 3205. Press enter. And the package is this one. You see exactly for just from the picture we can directly go to the component and directly identify which one is our desire so this is not correct this one is correct d2 pack okay uh, it shows us uh, the components the component exists in a variety of distributors mouser funnel let's go to the description it says the current rating is 110 amps. This is uh, in the best condition. Uh, we may not achieve this in real life because we have to keep the temperature always on 25 to achieve this temp uh, to achieve this current. So I have a huge doubt that we can get this. Uh, so maybe half of this, maybe 30 amps or 40 amps is a realistic expectation. And the drain to, uh, drain to source resistance is pretty low. Of course, in 25 degrees. Okay. Um, so I selected this MOSFET. This, this one was the best selection in my opinion. So you see the specification of the MOSFET is pretty good. And the recovery time and the rise time, all of them are pretty nice. And up to 55, so uh, my suggestion is that you don't go higher than 40 or maximum 45 volts. Anyway, let's go to the PCB. 
Okay, this is the PCB layout. As it is clear, it is a two layers PCB board. Let me show you in 3D. So, except for the connectors, the rest of the components are SMD. I should tell you, it was much easier for me to select true hole MOSFETs for this edge bridge or full bridge side. However, I selected SMD MOSFETs because it makes the board as compact as possible and easier for you to embed this board in whatever enclosure you have. So I, that's, a, that's why I selected SMD MOSFETs. Let me come back to, three, uh, to 2D and enable the single layer mode. So this side is for the edge bridge. These planes carry high amount of current and this side is ground. Let me show you the bottom layer. So except for this track, tracks, this ground, uh, this plane is totally ground and ground plane is very important in this project. You might amaze why it reduces the noise because this is a noisy board. Uh, when you connect the motor to this board, it makes a lot of noise and having a solid ground helps this board to in, uh, introduce a lower noise figure, okay? And that's why I also used a solid, almost a solid ground plane or it's a polygon actually for this side, okay? And let me disable this and you see some wires here. So these wires uh, helps to reduce the, uh, the ground path. I mean to make the ground path as short as possible. So I have used these wires also. So you got, this is the common practice that you should use in your boards as well. Do you see that except, uh, exactly near the sensitive areas, near these capacitors, near the ground pin of the chips, near the uh, decoupling capacitors, the ground pin of the decoupling capacitors, I placed at least one wire. Do you see here? And uh, uh, because the input voltage to the board is low, up to 40 volts, so the clearance is just uh, 0.3 millimeters. So it's pretty enough for this input voltage. All right, welcome to the test bench. It looks a bit messy, however, it's pretty easy to set up. The supply of the motor, the output wires to the DC motor, oscilloscope shows the PWM signal and it's pretty easy to examine the duty cycle. This is of course the DC motor and the gearbox. The output of the gearbox shows the rotation direction and the rotation speed of the motor. These two potentiometers adjust the rotation speed of the forward or reverse. So let's go for forward. You see that? Let's change the speed. Go to stop. Now we are stop. Let's go reverse. So you can individually adjust the rotation speed uh, of forward or reverse. I mean, uh, these two potentiometer allows us to individually adjust the rotation speed in the forward or reverse direction. Let's go to forward again. Stop. Backward. See that? I think it's a very useful project and I have many ideas for this board, even now. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to share and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up. See you in the next video.